welcome friends to the another session on communication electronics in this session we'll be discussing about the modulation index in amplitude modulation in this session we will see what is modulation index what is the formula for modulation index in am how it is possible to determine the modulation index practically and we will also see the power relations in am friends as you know that you are viewing this session on my youtube channel learn with prakash khanade and do not forget to subscribe to the channel so we know that in amplitude modulation the carrier signal is changed in its shape that is the original carrier signal has a fixed frequency and fixed amplitude but in amplitude modulation you will find that the frequency remains the same but the amplitude of the carrier signal is changed in accordance with the information signal or modulating signal so you will find that in the amplitude modulated voltage some crest tank troughs are produced as shown in this diagram now whenever we do certain modulation then it is mandatory for us to determine what is the percentage of this modulation and this percentage of modulation can be determined by using a parameter and that is being called as a modulation index so modulation index in am is a parameter that determines the amount of modulation modulation index in am is defined as the ratio of maximum amplitude of modulating signal to the maximum amplitude of carrier signal so normally in am for modulation index we use the symbol m suffix a and modulation index m a is equal to vm upon vc where vm is the maximum amplitude of modulating signal and vc is the maximum amplitude of carrier signal in am you will find that the modulation index will determine the degree of modulation or the depth of the modulation is determined by using this parameter the typical value for the modulation index in am is in the range of 0 to 1 so normally it is a fractional value and it is in the range of 0 to 1 when we want to determine the percentage of modulation then what we need to do is that we need to take the value of ma and then we need to multiply this by 100 so that we can get the percentage of modulation you will find that the most ideal value of ma is 1 that is when the modulation index ma is equal to 1 then in that case we get the 100% modulation and this is treated as the most ideal case in amplitude modulation now these are the waveforms which will demonstrate us how there is a change in the shape of the amplitude modulated signal when the value of ma is changed in the first diagram you will find that the value of ma is equal to 0 so when the value of ma is equal to 0 you will find that the amplitude of the carrier signal is fixed and there is no variation in the amplitude of the carrier signal when we keep the modulation index ma is equal to 1 by 2 that is 0.5 then you will find that the shape of the am wave is being changed and here you can easily observe that the shape of the am wave is changed in such a way that the amplitude of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the modulating signal so this envelope this outer shape or this envelope of the am wave is similar to that of the modulating signal when we increase the value of ma to 1 then you will find that uh, the shape will get little bit of modified as shown in this diagram so you will find that this minimum value of am signal is being almost reduced to 0 when the value of ma is equal to 1 so this is the case which is being treated as the most ideal case for amplitude modulation if we further increase the value of ma in such a way that ma becomes greater than 
then you will find that some kind of distortion is being produced in the amplitude modulated signal. So as shown in this diagram, you will find that the signal will be missing over here and it will cause a distortion. So as we have seen, the value of MA is equal to VM upon VC. So when you are keeping the value of MA is equal to one, it means that the value of VM, that is the maximum amplitude of modulating signal and the maximum amplitude of the carrier signal in this case is same. But when you increase the value of VM further to that of VC, then the distortions will be produced in the AM signal. Therefore, we should avoid this case. That is, you can increase, you can set the MA in such a way that it can have at the most a value one. So as shown in this diagram, whenever we find that the value of MA is greater than one, then there are some distortions produced in the amplitude modulated signal. And this case must be avoided. Now we can determine the value for MA practically. And for such determination, we can obtain an expression for measurement of MA. Suppose in the laboratory, you have set up an experiment and you can easily observe the amplitude modulated signal as shown in this diagram. Now, this is our center axis and you will find that from this center axis, this value is being called as Vmax. And this outer envelope, it is actually a modulating signal and therefore from this line you will find that this signal is Vm and this signal is also Vm. And this uh, from the trough to the center axis, this value is being called as the V minimum. Now from this uh, diagram we can write an expression like this. V max minus V min. So as I told you this is the distance which is V max. And this is the distance which is V min. Therefore, V max minus V min is just nothing but this much distance, and that is being written as twice V min. Therefore, we can write V m is equal to V max minus V min divided by 2. Now, similarly, we can say that this is our VC, the maximum amplitude of carrier signal. So, VC is just nothing but V max minus V min, V m. And therefore, Vc can be written as Vmax minus Vm. And now in this expression, I can substitute the value of Vm from the above step. And therefore, I can rewrite the equation for Vc as Vc is equal to Vmax minus Vmax minus Vmin divided by 2. When I multiply the Vmax by 2, then you will find that twice Vmax minus Vmax plus Vmin Therefore, here I can write Vc is equal to Vmax plus Vmin divided by 2. So you will find that we can get both the expressions from this waveform. The first one is for Vm and the second one is for Vc. Now we can easily obtain the formula for the modulation index because we know that the modulation index Ma is equal to Vm upon Vc. And therefore, when I substitute the value of Vm from this expression, and the value of Vc from this expression, you will find that this 2, 2 will get cancelled and therefore I will get the expression Ma is equal to Vmax minus Vmin divided by Vmax plus Vmin. That is practically when you observe such waveform on the screen of the cathode ray oscilloscope or CRO, then what you have to do is that you simply measure from the central axis this distance or this amplitude Vmax and then this distance or this amplitude V min. If you are able to measure these two amplitudes, then you take the subtraction of these two amplitudes in the numerator and then take the addition of these two amplitudes in the denominator and then determine the ratio and easily you can find the value for modulation index. Now let us go for some power relations in AM. You will find that when we go for the expression for the amplitude modulated voltage, then the expression for the amplitude modulated voltage can be given by the expression VAMT is equal to VC cos of omega CT plus MA VC by 2 cos of omega C plus omega M into T plus MA VC by 2 
cross of omega c minus omega m into t. You will find that the first term will represent the carrier signal, the second term will represent the upper side band, and the third term will represent the lower side band. Therefore, whenever we want to compute the power in AM signal, then it is necessary for us to compute the carrier power, the upper sideband power, and the lower sideband power. And the total power will be the summation of all three entities, that is the carrier power plus the upper sideband power plus the lower sideband power. So in order to compute the power in AM signal, initially we need to compute the carrier power then the USB power and then the LSB power and then we will add these terms together to get the total power in AM. Now we can easily compute the carrier power. The carrier power uh, is being written as PC is equal to, so P is for power, C is for carrier and the formula for this is V square divided by R where V is the maximum amplitude of carrier signal divided by R, where R is the resistance of the antenna to which this signal is coupled. While taking V in this expression, we need to take the RMS value of the voltage. And therefore, what I will do is that the maximum value of the carrier signal is VC. I will divide it by root two. So VC divided by root two square divided by R. Therefore, this equation will be VC square divided by two R. So here you should note that the carrier voltage is a root mean square voltage or RMS voltage and R is the resistance of the antenna to which this AM signal is coupled. Now similarly we can compute the upper and lower sideband power. You will find that as far as the amplitude of upper and lower sideband is concerned both the amplitudes are same and therefore the power in lower sideband and power in upper sideband is also same. So it can be given as it is equal to voltage square divided by R. But here also the, while considering the voltage, we will take the RMS value of the voltage. Therefore the maximum amplitude is MAVC divided by two divided by root two. Root two here we are dividing because we want to get the RMS value. And whole square divided by R. So which is equal to MA square VC square divided by two square is four under root two square is two, so four into two, eight R. So we will get the power in LSB and power in L USB as MA square VC square divided by eight R. Now this relation, the power in the lower and upper side band can be simply rewritten in the form of carrier power. So we know that the carrier power is VC square divided by two R and therefore we can write it as MA square divided by four into PC. And therefore the total sideband power, which is the power in upper sideband plus the power in lower sideband, which is equal to MA square divided by two into PC, where PC will stand for the carrier power. Now we can easily compute the total power. As I said, the total power is equal to PC plus PUSB plus PLSB which is just nothing but PC plus PSB means power in sidebands. And therefore you will find that when I substitute this PSB is equal to MA square divided by two into PC, then you will find that I can take the PC common and therefore in the bracket, I will get one plus MA square divided by two. That is the total power in amplitude of amplitude modulated signal is carrier power into one plus MA square divided by two. That is the total power will depend upon the modulation index MA. If you consider the ideal case of modulation, that is when MA is equal to one, then in that case, you will find that the total power will be 1.5 times PC because one plus one by two, it will turn out to be 1.5. And therefore the total power can be written as 1.5 times PC. So total power uh, for AM signal when MA is equal to one is 1.5 times PC. Now we will go for the efficiency. 
you will find that the efficiency of the AM signal of the AM system in terms of the power consumption can be obtained. And for efficiency, we use the symbol eta or N, which is equal to power in side bands divided by total power. So in the numerator, we have taken power in side bands because our information or intelligence is only in side bands. Therefore, the power in side bands is important to us divided by the total power. So when I substitute the values for power in side bands and total power, you will find that I will get the expression is equal to ma square divided by ma square plus two. When you consider the ideal case of ma is equal to one, then you will find that the efficiency will turn out to be one divided by one plus two. That is one divided by three. That is only 33% of the power is being used in order to carry the required information. So you will find that in AM, most of the power, that is 67% of the power is being utilized not to carry the information. So in a way, you can say that the AM system is not very efficient. So thank you friends for viewing the sessions. Hopefully you have understood the concept of modulation index and how to compute the power relations in AM. In our next session, we will discuss various amplitude modulator circuits where we will see how by using the electronic devices, we can achieve amplitude modulation. So thank you for waving the sessions. And as I say, if you have any queries, then you always you can write it to me. Thank you all for waving the session.